My brothers and sisters, as we gather ourselves today on this fifth Sunday of Lent, we start with that great sign and symbol of the passion of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray today that Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, will raise up to new life our brothers and sisters. Let us also acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the celebration of these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit. If only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you the word of the lord thanks be to god
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one who love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place that he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to him meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you only have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whenever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So that the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, He could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man, have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Martha said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He had been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. It's been a few years that the church has really have gone into a troubling place, a troubling time. But what do we believe? It's during this time, people, time that we have seen people with great anger, great distress, and great sadness. But they are right. They should be angry. They should be sad. They should be upset. Because it's the physical nature of the church that the church that we see around us, many feel, has failed us. But look at the gospel today. Look at the faith that Martha has and that untrust in Jesus. The trust that doesn't hinder any of her belief, but it gives her into a deeper relationship, gives her into a deeper place. 
So my brothers and sisters, as we enter into these final days of Lent, where is our position with Jesus? Where is our trust in God? That we can be like Martha and Mary, or like the bystanders today, and truly see the miracle that Jesus performed. Because it is by the rising of Lazarus that we see Jesus as being the true God, the true Messiah. Because Jesus has done what no other prophet or no other false prophet has ever done, is that he raised someone from the dead. So my brothers and sisters, as we prepare in the upcoming weeks for the resurrection, for the Easter of the church, for the Easter of our lives, where are we prepared to enter into that relationship with Jesus? Are we willing to say, yes, we believe that you are the resurrection and the life, so we can see our lives transformed? So it's today. Let's not give up. Let's not lose our faith. Let's not lose our prayer and trust in God, but truly see the source of all things, that the resurrection of Jesus can transform anything in our lives. It is together that we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and hope of Martha, let us call upon the Lord in prayer. For the Holy Church of God, that she may be defended from the snares of her enemies through the Spirit of Christ, who makes his home in her, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of this world, that they may be gathered into the Father's kingdom through the prayers and sacrifices of Christians in every nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dying, that they may pass peacefully and confidently through the gates of death to meet him who is the resurrection. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn, that the Christ who wept for Lazarus, his friend, may console them in their grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the Lord may unbind them and let them go free in the kingdom of his glory. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, our Redeemer, you cried for your friend Lazarus, and you raised him from the tomb. Raise up us from the tombs of sin and death to life of understanding and hope. Hear the prayer we offer to you, who lives and reigns with the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accepts the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of Christian faith, graciously purify them by the workings of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as the true man, he wept for his friend Lazarus. As the eternal God, he raised him from the tomb. Just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by the sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the host of angels adore your majesties and rejoice in your presence forever. May our voices join with theirs in one chorus of exalted praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith.
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Douglas, our Bishop, all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and inform the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. On behalf of the people of Pope John the Twenty-Third Parish and Christ the King Parish in Liverpool, New York, we thank you everyone for watching us today on this fifth Sunday of Lent. And we also ask you to know that you're always in our prayers. Those who are homebound, those who are in hospital, those who are in need of prayers always. We always keep in mind that the sick hold a special place in our hearts. And it's together that we raise ourselves up into the loving presence of God. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our life.